Vancouver, uh, back from Toronto. Always enjoy coming back. Um, so as Janice mentioned, this is a adaptation of, of my book, Black Code, which was published in 2013. And the book uh, essentially is about my experiences in the Citizen Lab over the last 15 years or so. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Citizen Lab is a, a research lab at the University of Toronto based at the Monk School of Global Affairs. And we do research on digital security issues that arise out of human rights concerns. So um, everyone's aware of cybersecurity issues. Nearly a day doesn't go by when you pick up the newspaper and hear about a data breach or something like that. Um, we don't cover the whole terrain. Instead, uh, we focus on issues that arise out of human rights concerns. So, for example, uh, we do a lot of investigation of cyber espionage, but we don't just look at any old cyber espionage. We're interested in cyber espionage that affects human rights organizations or journalists or activists. Um, and we've published uh, a lot about that. Um, it's a relatively small group. You get a good sense from the film of what it's like inside the Citizen Lab and some of our experiences. Um, when I first created the Citizen Lab, uh, my idea was to um, uh, combine methods from different disciplines. I'm a political scientist, but most of the people that work at the Citizen Lab uh, come from different uh, backgrounds and, and have different skills. I would say our strength is really in the uh, computer science and engineering science area. Um, we have people who are among, I would consider the best when it comes to investigating um, digital security issues and, and really um, uncovering a lot that goes on beneath the surface of the internet and trying to raise awareness about what's going on. Uh, when I started <clears throat> Citizen Lab, I with a bit of hubris, I think, I, I, my aim was to create something that was like a, I, I, I call it a counterintelligence organization for civil society, which was kind of laughable um, because we certainly weren't that at the beginning. Um, but the funny thing is now we've kind of become that. And some days it's actually a bit daunting. So um, we've made uh, adversaries in just about every part of the world. <laughs> Um, it's very difficult for me now to travel anywhere um, for security issues. I worry a lot about the safety of my staff and the people with whom I work. You'll see a lot of them here in the film. Um, and, um, you know, if it's not a lawyer or a security service or some company threatening to sue us, um, <clears throat> you know, you wish for something and then it happens and sometimes you think, did I really bargain for this? I'm not sure I'm up for it some days. Um, but it's really uh, the talent of the people that I'm fortunate to work with every day. Um, extraordinarily skilled men and women who work at the Citizen Lab are profoundly amazing. And when I wake up every day, I just feel uh, so lucky to be involved in, 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 this, uh, in this group and, and among this team. Um, so the book, Black Code, um, the title is actually a, maybe a, double or triple entendre, uh, I was trying to be clever with the title, so um, throughout my academic career and throughout my professional life, one of the things I've been curious about and I really wanted to um, raise awareness about is, is that there's a lot going on beneath the surface of the internet that I felt a lot of people um, were not aware of, and they should be aware of it. Um, and that's where the idea of black code. There's a bit of a mystery, you know, when you think about when you send an email or you post an image to Instagram, it seems like magic. It just kind of goes across the ether of the internet and appears somewhere on the other side of the world. Um, but beneath all of that, there's a vast physical infrastructure. And we don't know about, uh, a lot about that infrastructure. <clears throat> and yet, within that inf infrastructure is where a lot of power is exercised by private companies and by governments. Um, so the black refers a bit to the mystery of, of it all. Um, and the second uh, sense of the term is that there are malevolent forces working uh, beneath the surface. And, you know, we tend to hear a lot about um, terrorists and, and things that are, are scary organizing on the Internet. Um, some of that, uh, I think, is quite important to be aware of for our own national security. But meanwhile, there's a lot that's been going on over many, many decades. Um, that people are not aware of, and this leads to the third sense of the term, which is around secret government programs. There's a, 
a way in which they're referred. Um, it's black operations, um, black budgets. Um, you think of the National Security Agency in the United States. Here in Canada, our own communication security establishment. So most governments have some kind of agency uh, that's uh, operating in the shadows, uh, largely shielded from public accountability and transparency. Um, many of these were created during the Cold War, and they're kind of vestiges of an earlier time that have survived and flourished in the digital age that we find ourselves in. Um, they're kind of like Victorian relics of a bygone era. And, and I mean that in the sense that the regulations and the laws that were created to govern them are really out of date. Um, because what's happened is uh, all of us, collectively, have really transformed our communications experience. We've essentially turned our lives inside out. All of us carry these devices in our pockets that follow us around, emitting radio signals constantly. Um, that data doesn't disappear into the ether. It uh, sits on the servers and the infrastructure, and uh, governments have developed very powerful capabilities to uh, monitor uh, that data, collect and analyze it. <clears throat> and of course, private companies do so now as well, because the entire economy on which all of this rests is about surveillance of users and their personal habits and social relationships to push advertisements to make money. It's an advertisement surveillance economy, essentially. Um, now, I, I, when I reflect on this, I think, how will liberal democracy survive in the midst of all of this? And, and that was really the motivation uh, for writing Black Code. <laughs> to the documentary, um, Nick DePontier, the filmmaker, I'm sorry, he, he couldn't be here. Uh, I met him through a mutual friend, uh, mutual friends. Uh, when I moved from Vancouver to Toronto, one of the first uh, people I met was uh, Mike Downey and his brother Gord Downey, of the late Gord Downey of the Tragically Hip. And <clears throat> I miss him very dearly still. Uh, we were, became very good friends. Uh, and uh, Nick DePontier and his wife Jennifer Bejewal had done uh, films with uh, uh, Gord over the years, including uh, Long Time Running, which many of you might have seen uh, the, the movie about the last Tragically Hip tour. Um, so Nick read the book, and he loved Black Code, and he said, I want to make a documentary about it. Uh, you know, he did a fantastic job. I could go on at great length, but um, one of the interesting things was when he approached me about it and the filming started, there was a real challenge for Nick um, because there's so much of what we do that is very sensitive. Um, we take uh, security very seriously in the Citizen Lab, so I would be you know, I would call up Nick and say, you wouldn't believe what you know, we're about to discover. And he'd say, okay, let me get my camera. I'd say, mm -hmm. no, you can't film this. You, know, you can't do this and put somebody at risk. And so that was frustrating for him. Uh, he filmed for, he followed us around, I think, for a year and a half, including to some quite, uh, quite risky locations. So I give him credit for that. And I think he ultimately was able to tell a very interesting story about not only the work we do at the Citizen Lab, but especially about the people with whom we work in many parts of the Global South who are really uh, what I would consider to be um, the uh, fighters for internet freedom uh, in some of the most uh, dangerous parts of the world. Um, so without further ado, I hope you enjoy the film and uh, thank you for coming out. Thank you, Janice.